Good afternoon. It is Catherine and Christopher Tipper of Hunter Benefits Consulting Group. And I usually ask Christopher what day is it, but I know that it is German, International German Beer Day. Yeah, and it's April 23rd. Yes, uh, but it is on the couch with the Friday afternoon <laughs> bourbon edition. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Our On the Couch video series is supposed to be an entertaining look at ERISA and the pension industry. It entertains us at least. So uh, we think we've got a great episode for you today. Today we are going to be discussing the perennial question of who's the employer? But, but it's, it's a, a different EIN! <laughs> Before we dive into today's topic, we're going to check with Christina Cannonan to see if we have a Washington update. Christina? No. no. <laughs> I said we amuse ourselves. Uh, I thought we did. Is it a state yet? There isn't anything new. Okay. Okay, but a couple of weeks ago, the Department of Labor, uh, EBSA, Employee Benefit Security Agency, uh, no went through and they have many, many things that they have posted on the Federal Register with through OMB for comment. Okay. For instance, the SAR. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be commenting on the summary well, no, annual report? Well, no, they, they already approved oh. the summary annual report. They sneaked it right through. Okay. But you can comment on EFAST and the 5500s as long as you do it by June 1st. What do we get to comment on? Adding 5558s? Well, that would be one thing to add. Okay, yeah. Ooh, that would be really good, wouldn't it? This is the place to do it, right? This is the place to do it by June 1st, yes. Okay. Yeah. And also, they're asking for comments on the EFAS2 credentials, because these all expire on November 30th of this year. What expires on November 30th? Uh, their approval of those, of the whole program to do the credentials and the, the EFAS program. Okay, but... 5,500 signers don't have to go and get new credentials December 1st, no. do they? Okay, so you know, no. are you talking about the Do you service? like the way it works? Yes, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And, and we like the 5,500s except for not having the 5558s. Right, exactly. You can also comment on Sorbanes-Oxley if you would like to. Is, is there a specific link that we can put at the end of the video for that? Yes. To go and comment? Yes. Yes, okay. we can. Good. And, and I would encourage everyone to vote for electronic version of the um, 5558s. Yes. And so we can stop doing paper. And yeah. we can stop having the IRS lose them. Correct. Is it the IRS or the post office that loses them? It's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. And then there are those sure people who never up. really the mail problem. them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those people who don't really mail, they're also a problem. If it's electronic, everybody knows Where it was it done. Yep. Thank you, Christina. Catherine, yes. what do you think is the hardest part to figure out other than getting the employee census? Who is the employer? Exactly. And you, paid it? A, you paid attention to what the title of the episode is. Wonderful. All right, so Catherine, do you know the different types of employer arrangements? Well, I'm certain you're talking about S-Corps, LLCs, different kinds of um, partnerships. No, but actually whether or not something's an S-Corp or an LLC, um, is, is or whatever is going to be part of it, but that's not what I'm looking for. And you're not looking if they're benevolent or have good snacks no, in the snack we're not, bar, No, we're not right? talking about that. Okay. okay. What we're wanting to talk about is single employers or multiple employer plans. Right. Okay? All right. So now then, qualified retirement plans are concerned with five different types of relationships or entities. All right? They are single employer, controlled group, affiliated service group, multiple employer, and a combination of those other four, okay? So this is what we were talking about. You were alluding to before, and it's not really about whether or not um, there's multiple EINs or when the fiscal year ends. Correct, those things don't matter, they're red flags. People think those are the important things, but they're not, none of that matters, all right? Because that's pretty, Straightforward to handle. Well, yeah, you'd think so. Yeah. So, so what we're worried about is figuring out who the owners are. All right. What we're looking for, and and this might sound really simple, but it's the key to what we're asking 
that's the key to what we're asking for, <laughs> is who the owners are. We're looking for the top five owners, human owners, I'm going to get to that in a second, of each uh, of each employer, okay? We're also looking for their spouses, lineal ascendants, and descendants. And when I say we're looking for the human owners, oftentimes we're told a corporation or a trust or some other entity owns X percent of a company. We need to know who owns or controls that trust. Gotta find the people. That's right, and that's so that makes it rather straightforward with a controlled group. Uh, affiliated service groups are a little bit more, uh, a little bit more complicated though. We're so, more hiding this, yeah. yeah. Now then, with an affiliated service group, all right, um, we, we've got we've got different relationships to worry about. Uh, control groups, like I was saying, is a, is a little bit more straightforward, where we're looking for eighty percent, eighty percent being controlled by the same people, and then we're looking for a fifty percent common ownership. Don't worry, there's going to be a following video with more detail on this in a couple of weeks. All right. The once again, this is what you do quite well. This and Colin we Christopher is actually a legitimate option. Correct. That is one of the things. Yes, it, absolutely. All right. So now then, control groups are relatively straightforward. It's simple math. Do you know what the more complicated one to figure out is? Do you remember what that is? The complicated math? No, it's not complicated. No, the, the, we've got control groups is straightforward to figure out. And then do you remember the other type of single employer arrangement? Affiliated, Affiliated service groups. Correct. And that, <laughs> and that's that's an arrangement like our attorneys, okay, where they're not a controlled group, but they meet the other definition to determine whether or not they're a single employer, and that's where you have. So in, a lot of attorneys do this, uh, doctors, dentists, etc. They will have each practitioner, the attorney uh, or the doctor or the dentist, will have their own corporation with them as the only employee, and then they get together and own a third or a half or a quarter or whatever of the practice. That is pretty much the poster child for affiliated service group. And don't real estate people do that too, where yeah. each one of their buildings is owned differently? That, yes, and that, that's actually, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about- Isn't it funny what he laughs at? But yeah, keep well, going, no, that's because, great. Because that's going to be the third video. Uh, after this, we're gonna, um, a couple of weeks, we're gonna be talking about control groups. Two weeks after that, we're gonna be talking about affiliated service groups. And two weeks after that, we're gonna be talking about multiple employer plans. I'm glad you find this funny. and. Real estate arrangements are a real common place to see those different types of, of organizations like that. So get your popcorn ready. Yep. And make some um, bourbon candy to throw over it. Oh, yeah. that's a good idea. Okay. Do we so, have takeaways for today? We have takeaways, which is not a real nice pizza or something. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> Darn. The three takeaways are different EINs or fiscal year ends don't, don't matter. matter. Right. Who's the humans? Yep. And the relatives, and who the relatives are matter actually as well. Yeah, that's the spouse, the parents, or the kids. Yep. Um, how the plan is to operate depends on knowing who the employer or employers are. That, yep, that's the single employer or multiple employer plan. So as always, if you kind of like us, like us, share us, comment, whatever, and always, uh, we've got the website, hunterbenefits.com, or email us at sales at hunterbenefits.com. Is that a wrap? Uh, that's a wrap, but to put a big point on it, that this is complex and we're trying to explain it well, but really, seriously, human beings do crazy things. So it's better to call Christopher and go, Hey, this is this is what's going on. I got a How situation. I got so, a situation. Filippo, questions? No. Christina, did we do okay? Did okay. Did I pass the audition? Sure. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody, and have a really good weekend. See Take you care. later. Bye.